Why do I drive myself so? Why do I drive these people? Innocent humans who know nothing of the horrors that dwell in the void. I do so because I must. I do so because what they may see as joyless or relentless in me is as nothing to the slavery and torment that the rest of the galaxy would inflict on them. I will not stand for it. I will not bend, and I will not coddle these people. The flesh is weak, and iron is strong. The boy will learn, and he will teach the others. It is for him to use coaxing words to convince them. For me, I have no time for such things. This land must become as iron, or I will die. And they will die. Hard as my heart is, I cannot bear the thought. The days passed, and the town grew. With the knowledge of the golem spreading to the blacksmith of the land, demand for ores of all kind increased. The old mine was reopened, and with the guidance of Captain Fanuel, the old mines were reinforced. So long as the golem's instructions were followed, there should be no collapsing tunnels. Strong reinforced arches now protected the heads of the miners who delved into the earth for rare minerals. Each day, Abaya took care of his master Methuselah, who was becoming more frail by the day. Each evening he learned the golem's craft. How to heat the metal, how to shape it, when to cool it. Fanuel's forge became more sophisticated at every opportunity. He was relentless. He claimed every scrap of copper he could find whenever he could find it. Why do you need copper, Master? Are you using it for bronze? There are stronger metals. You must have some other design in mind. Indeed I do. I intend to construct a generator. Have you... Seen lightning before? Of course. Uh, the powerful bolts that shatter the skies. I will keep it simple for you. I intend to create my own lightning. My own electricity. I need more power than my own strength to design greater and more powerful machines. I have to. I have to. Oh, there is still so much to do. My lord... You can't do this all on your own. I think we can help. There are already blacksmiths flocking to you to learn under you. What if they worked alongside you as I do? Right now they come here and they learn and they return home. The town is already growing so much larger with your presence. More people are arriving to work in the mines. Many believe you were sent by the great sky father. And they wish to do the Emperor's will. They wish to do your will. I am occupied with my own work and maintaining my systems. How can I fruit away my time recruiting more smiths to my cause? I can do that. Methuselah has trained me. I know how to preach to the people. And I know how to spark the fires of their hearts. Or at least I think I do. I will bring them to you if you will teach them. Then I will teach them. If you gather them to me. Oh, there is so much to be done. I have lived for so long and for once. I feel like I have no time for anything. Well, with your example, we will help you make time. And so it was. Abaya spoke to the people, to the smiths who arrived. He preached the word of the emperor. He taught of the prophecy and the coming of the golem. In some stories, the golem taught men great skill and craftsmanship. But such gifts must be used for the glory of the emperor. So Fanuel gained more followers. He taught them to be smiths, to be artisans, 
to think only of technology and progress, to learn of the weakness of flesh, and to trust only in the strength of iron. And so it was, until the shadows from a distant land began to loom. The golem was making repairs to himself, as a rare rain poured outside. Abaya watched in amazement at the intricacies of the machines that kept Captain Fanuel alive. So many wires and pistons, and what seemed like infinite complexity. I suppose one day you will teach me to build augmentics and power armor. The golem shook his head. Not if our shipment of ore doesn't arrive soon. The storm probably delayed them. I don't know if there's much we can do besides wait. I hate waiting. I hadn't noticed. Captain Fanuel looked up to Abaya. He paused for a moment. And for the first time that the young man had ever seen, the golem laughed. <laughs> I say that a lot, then, do I? It's a bit of a mantra. Abaya grinned. Well, my time is precious to me. But, perhaps... I must learn to practice the virtue of patience, for now. The two shared another laugh. Suddenly, they could hear a horse approach, with loud thuds as the hooves beat against the earth. Captain Faneuil set aside his tools and stood. It was not long before there was a knock at the door. Come in. The door is unlocked. A cloaked figure opened the door. Abaya could see his ragged beast behind him. The creature was frothing and exhausted. Its hooves cracked and bleeding from being driven so hard. The man himself was haggard and pale. Lord, it is a terror! A terror has come to this land! What has happened? Raiders! Vicious raiders and pirates have arrived on our shores in numbers that we have never seen before. And, and these monsters, oh, they're not just thieves. They are cruel, bloodthirsty demons. I, the, the things I've seen them do, I, I, I can't. Do you not have warriors to defend your lands? We, we did not have time to muster. It is harvest season, and the men are in the fields. It takes time to gather and arm them. By the time we gather our forces, they are gone, killing the men and taking the women and children into slavery. I will not stand for brigands despoiling these lands. Abaya, sound the bells. Gather the men. We will march against these vermin and drive them into the sea. It appears that my reavers have found a nice, rich, fat piece of land to pillage. And what lovely baubles, trinkets, and flesh they bring back to me. It will be nice to have some fresh playmates. Oh, they do break so easily. Hmm. I think I shall join them on their next expedition. These weak creatures are hardly a challenge. But I do enjoy my meat free range. And it has become so dreadfully dull day in and day out in my city of sin. Let us see some new faces on this wretched world, and perhaps add them to my collection. No man do they call me, my mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to the latest episode of Heart of Iron. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like or comment, as that is the best protection against a raid by murderous, debaucherous, slaneshi weirdos. If you are not yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about robots learning to laugh. If you really love what I do and simply must support me, you can do so via Patreon or PayPal, both of which are linked down below. 
And if you are confused as to what is going on, you can click on the playlist link, which should be appearing on screen now, and listen to the story from the beginning. Thank you all very much again. No Man Out. <laughs>